We're going to drop these at the same time. Now, NIST tells us, basically, that they're going to fall and hit the ground at the same time. That's the official story. How many of us agree with NIST? They're going to fall and hit the ground. At the... This is sixth or seventh grade physics. We all get this. We learn it uh, very early on. Well, what we do in the scientific method is we conduct experiments because I happen to have brought a 95 story building with 80,000 tons of structural steel in it and two 15 story buildings to drop. We're, we're, we have experiments in the scientific method. So we're, we're going to test this theory of mists and let's see how it flies. We're, now I may be an architect, but I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I know these are boxes, okay? And this is an analogy. It's a model. It's an experiment. There's obvious differences between the structure of the boxes and the structure. But the point is that we are pointing out that, there, that when we meet resistance, there's going to be at least a slowing down, if not a complete halting. But I'm not sure. I've never done this before. So we're going to see here. Three. Two, you ready? <laughs> one, oh my god, the one without any resistance and it falls at free fall speed, gaining faster and faster until it hits the ground. That's how fast, this one should have gone down according to NIST. It met an equal and opposite reaction from the structure below that was designed to resist it. In fact, an analysis of the North Tower reveals that there is no impact load at all. It starts with continuous two-thirds of free fall acceleration, almost complete acceleration, <coughs> uh, free fall, straight down through the path of greatest resistance, accelerating, getting faster and faster through those columns, 47 of them, and perimeter columns, 252, I think. That's not supposed to happen. You'll see on our site uh, papers that, in fact, show they document that this can't happen. Now, NIST didn't do any analysis relative to showing the resistance of the structure below. We'll look at that in a moment. But there's an even bigger problem here. Where is the pile driver that's driving this building down at almost free fall speed? It's destroyed itself, as you saw in the first four seconds. It's not even there. After that, the building's tearing itself apart at free fall speed. Free fall acceleration. It's unbelievable, and it's totally dismembering itself. In fact, look at it. The leading edge of these uh, mushroom clouds are full of core columns, perimeter columns, aluminum cladding. Let's look at the south tower. It, it was hit lower. It begins to angle over, and we'd expect that angular momentum to continue and fall as a heap on the ground. The problem is, is that it disappears and is completely dismembered inside <coughs> the structure. There's no pile on the ground under it. And what does it look like is happening here? Belts of explosions, like the fireman described. 22 degrees off-center, continuing that angular momentum. That's an asymmetrical load to the building below. How can it drive the building down at free fall acceleration when, in fact, we also have asymmetrical loading from the fire, asymmetrical loading from the plane damage, and now the, the building is uh, unloaded, uh, off, off center. Look what happens from below in this building now. My God, symmetrical bands of explosions traveling all the way down the building when we have all that asymmet asymmetry on top. It's a complete non sequitur. It makes no sense. This is not any analysis that was given to us by NIST. Uh, the, the building is uh, completely distributed around the boundary and outside the boundary of the tower. Does it even look like a gravitational collapse? I mean, let's just really start to ask ourselves these questions. Do we have lateral ejection of steel? Now let's look at the collapse of the Twin Towers. We are seeing explosions rather than implosions, a first in demolition history. A 
sequenced rumble becomes a roar as debris is thrown outward. The damage is not contained. Windows are blown from neighborhood buildings. What kind of energy enabled this? Here, a chunk of steel was flung 400 feet, wedging itself deep into Three World Financial Center on Vesey Street. A female photographer taking pictures of Ground Zero wondered why so many steel beams were jutting from neighborhood buildings. What shot pieces of the towers all the way across the street? <laughs> Indeed. The the, the steel that went the farthest wasn't the steel from the top that you would expect to drift farther. It was steel from the mechanical floors that held in the heavy mechanical equipment and the sky lobbies where the elevators went to. They, they, they're much more reinforced, so presumably the, the, the explosions had to be much harder to dismember all of that uh, steel, sending the perimeter wall units 600 feet at 50 to 70 miles an hour. Instant acceleration out of the sides of the Twin Tower. And where are the pancakes? This is a pancaking collapse. We're looking for pancakes in a pancaking collapse. In fact, there were 110 floors, each of them an acre in size. That's 110 acres of four-inch thick concrete over metal decking. We're looking for that. I don't see it, do you? There's no floors. There's no concrete. There's maybe little tiny chunks of concrete. Where's the floors? Where are the floor trusses? There's a two-story pile of debris. It's not floors, it's core columns, perimeter columns, aluminum cladding, and other stuff. Huge problem. How about that dust? Uh, all we see at the base is dust and, and metal. Where's the 90,000 tons of concrete? Four and five inch thick reinforced concrete. And you see, and there's no concrete. There's very little concrete. All you see is aluminum and steel. What happened to the concrete? The concrete was pulverized. And I was down here Tuesday, and it was like you were on a foreign planet. All of lower Manhattan, not just this site, from river to river, there was dust powder, two, three inches thick. The concrete was just uh, pulverized. You have two 110 story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. There were 10,000 file cabinets in these buildings. This is the only one that was found, and it was in the basement. You could pick it up with your pinky. <laughs>